Hello, welcome to apenasimagens.com channel. I'm Wagner Lungoff, and in this video, I'm going to show you one way you can cut 120 film and re-spool 127 film. This type of film was very popular for amateur market cameras. So there are plenty, there are maybe dozens or hundreds of different cameras using 127. I have three samples here. This is the size Icon. It's called Baby Box Tangor because there was a box Tangor with 120 and this is the baby version for 127. It's a box camera, very simple. The lens is a Frontar. I think it's simply a meniscus. And I have here the Kodak Baby Brownie. Very cute. I think that exactly because those were cameras without a lot of features. Uh, the design was something that could be more creative, more uh, attractive to consumers. So this is the baby box. And there are some with more resources, like this is the Ashika 44. It's uh, a twin lens reflex camera, like uh, the Rolleiflex. And the Rolleiflex also has a version for 127. So, there are many cameras that can be used. What we need in order to re-spool the film is you need two uh, spools 127 size. This may seem difficult to find but it's not because the cameras are very cheap if you go for this type of box camera. And normally inside them you have already one spool because this system for those not familiar with I'll tell you this system is completely different from the 135 film in this one you have a cartridge and the film is inside then while you take pictures the camera is pulling out the pulling out the, the film then you rewind and goes back here and this is for development in this type of system no the film is here it goes completely to the other spool and this one goes for development so inside the camera normally there is one spool left you find people selling these spools on, on the auction sites but they normally ask for more than the camera or, or close to the price of one camera so it's better to buy two cameras box cameras than you have already two spools the backing paper, it's a nice thing to have because it has the, the marks here with the, the numbers of the, the frames, numbering the frames. But if you don't have the back paper, no problem because as we are going to cut the 120 film, you can use this back paper and in the website, in the tutorial in my website, the link is in the video description, you have the exactly measurements you need to make your own marks on the backing paper of 120 film and use it with 127. So you need two spools of this. You need one 120 fresh film, one spool of 20, 120 film. You need a camera of this type here. This is a camera using 120 film. It can be scrap, doesn't need to be a working camera because we just need the film advancing mechanism. This one is a working camera. It's okay, but it can be something without lens, without bellows, with light leaking, no problem. We just want to advance the film. So you need the spool, the camera, and you will need the little device here. I'll give you details later. It's, uh, it's the one that you actually cut the film. It has a blade attached here. Then you need a rule like this with one important measurement. That's the width of um, 127 spool. And the size is about one meter, one meter 10. The size of one strip of, of film. And that's it. The rest is a scissor, blade, and adhesive tape. It's better to use a glue tape. And that's it. So let us see how to, to set it up, how to cut and how to spool the film. So I will start setting up 
the back paper and the spool over this rule and here they will receive the fresh film so i start with the i have here 127 spool and the back paper this is an original back paper for 127 but it could be uh, one from 120 with the appropriate marks here handmade so i have to figure what is the first frame and then i will fix it on this side on this end of the rule then i go the other side and here i fix the this is the spool that will actually receive the fresh film so i start it's important to have it a bit tight and here i have the last frame marked as 12. then i have to the, the 120 film is a bit longer than the 27 so i can leave more room here to be in the safe side and i will lay it down here over the room now i have to fix it here but in a way that i'll be able to lose it in the darkness so i decided to apply this plastic rule and the clamp and here we go so this is almost ready what is still missing is that i i need to prepare a piece of adhesive tape that will be applied when i come from this side to this side with the the end of the film i'll leave it here notice that i cut it a bit larger than the the back paper because i can't leave any loose tip of the film here uh, because there's a tendency that it will be jammed inside the camera so i i apply a tape that is bigger and then i cut it to size with a blade so it's important also to leave a blade and a scissor that and the tape that will be easily found in the darkness in case you need it okay so this is set up now let us see how the, the how to cut the film as i said before we need the camera of this type it's a, this is a folding camera it's a netar and it doesn't need to be a working camera it's just uh, the advance of the film that is important and this type of camera has a rail here where the film runs but this rail has two levels one that is deeper and has exactly the width of uh, 120 film and the second one is in a bit higher level and it has exactly the width of um, film flattener so this device here has the same width of the film flattener so if i apply it here even if i put pressure over here it, it still leaves room for the film to run beneath that's that's the point that's what we want and over here has a blade that can be pressed and pierced the film and back paper and as i advance the film here it will be cut to size about this details about this piece here it's a little wood board plywood and i made a slit a cut over here that's not exactly yet the, the size i need but i have a fine tuning adjustment here because these two screws holding this little piece of wood here this wood has the holes larger than the screws so if i lose them i can go back and forth and make my film uh, larger or smaller as, as as i need it so this is by trial and error you start with a scrap 120 film and try to figure how to get exactly the same uh, width of 127 film 
the blade is a regular blade, easy to find in, in your office stores. It's attached here by a M2 screw. It's very important to have a second one here to hold it in place because as the film runs beneath, there will be a tendency to, to put it backwards. So it's important to, to, to be here and, and hold the blade in place. And this movement here, I don't know whether it's really necessary, but I consider that it's better to position the blade exactly where it belongs to be sure that is it's firmly and right in the in place and only then to pierce film and back paper and start cutting okay so i think this is maybe just nice to have not absolutely necessary so that's the way that's the way we i've been using to cut the 120 film and, and it works pretty well I had the camera previously loaded with the 120 film. I decided to shade my eyes because it's difficult to pretend you're not seeing in case you are seeing something. So I can now position the, the device over the camera, be sure that it's in place. Then I switch off the lights and start advancing the film. You see that noise is exactly the blade cutting. You start cutting the paper only, then you have the adhesive tape and the film. There is a resistance there. You have to hold firmly the cutter, otherwise it will, it will lose the place. And now it's just spooling completely from one to the other side. When it starts to turn loose, that means you are done. You see the noise is not there. The resistance also, you, you feel in your, in your hands. Now I separate film and paper. If you're going if you intend to use this paper as a backing paper for the 127, you can. But then you must have a light proof container and you put the little film roll inside the container. Then you have the time, you can switch on the lights and you have the time to mark the, the numbers, the figures of the frames in the backing paper and prepare it over the rule like I did with the 127. And later you, you get the film and apply over it. As I prepared the, an original 127 backing paper, I can go it directly. I had a mobile phone behind that camera to get this angle. You see, now I put the film in position to start rolling it. Okay, now it's just rolling. From time to time, it's important to hold the spool firmly and pull it backwards in order to tighten the, the paper and the film around it. You see, that's what I'm doing now. See, I pull so it, it gets tighter because when it arrives to the end, to the other end of the, the strip, it must be really tightened to the, the spool. And of course, you must avoid uh, your fingertips touching the film emulsion. You can get stains later on if you do that. 
you see the 120 film is longer. You have to cut it when you arrive to the end of the, the spoon of the strip. Now I'm applying the blue tape. This is a bit difficult because you can't be really sure whether it's right in place or not. Ideally, it should be half on the film and half on the paper, but you have to do that just with your fingers. Now, as I said before, the tape is larger than the, the rule, than the, the strip. I'm cutting one side. Now I'll cut the other side. Now the, the first spool can be taken off. And that's it. Lights on, it's done. Well, that's the method I wanted to show you. I hope you liked it. And I wish you a lot of fun with your babies. And see you next time.